Hey friends, we all know how powerful it can be to hear stories of people who have taken their pain and partnered with God to find new purpose in it. That's why we do what we do and why we share these stories on the podcast week after week. Now I wanna personally invite you to be a part of sharing the story that started it all here at Nothing Is Wasted Ministries. On July 30th, I'm launching my book, Nothing Is Wasted, a true story of hope, forgiveness, and finding purpose in pain. It's a story of finding hope after devastating loss and how God uses our greatest pain to show us his redemptive purposes for us. In it, you'll learn more about my late wife, Amanda, her life, her legacy, and even how in her death, God is using her life to point people to him. We need your help stewarding this story by bringing it to your friends, families, churches, and circles of influence, which is why we are asking you, our faithful listeners, to be a part of our book launch team. As a part of the book launch team, you'll have access to read the complete book manuscript prior to the July 30th release date. You'll be able to join me for an exclusive virtual book club this spring and summer. You'll also be eligible for special prizes throughout your time on the launch team, as well as access to all the pre-order bonuses that we have for you. And to be a part of helping us get the Nothing Is Wasted book launched into the world, all you have to do is pre-order a copy of the book when it's available beginning April 1st, and then fill out the form on nothingiswastedbook.com with your pre-order confirmation number. You'll then receive an invite into our exclusive book launch team group. We know this story is going to impact so many people who are hurting and looking for hope in their own pain. Thank you for being a part of all that we do here at Nothing Is Wasted and for joining us on this journey. Oh man, this is awesome. We've got so many uh, great friends of Nothing Is Wasted Ministries, uh, partners of Nothing Is Wasted Ministries right here on this episode with us. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see their faces. If you're not, you're going to have to wait for a little bit before they start chiming into this conversation. But the whole point of this, Aubrey, is that we want to talk about our coaching and really the necessity in our own healing journeys for a wise guide and to be able to um, derive help and hope from someone who has already yeah. walked the journey that we are walking specifically. And um, it's just such an imperative thing to be able to, to have that. And so we've, we have joining us, we have Ken Roberts, who's our local church development director, who was the coaching director for uh, basically the inception, uh, or not inception, the conception of coaching for Nothing Is Wasted Ministries. And now most recently, we have shifted that over to Teresa Glantz. Teresa has been on the podcast with me a few times. We've talked about some of the coaching that she does, and she's now taking the helm of um, our coaching. And then we're also joined by a couple of our coaches, Jen Bell and Carissa Sprinkle. Woo-hoo! You guys know Carissa. Jen is new to the Nothing Is Wasted family is ter- in terms of hearing her voice, but she's been doing some coaching for some time. And so we're really glad to have all of you guys on uh, this time. I don't want to waste any time, Aubrey. I want to make sure that we really give everybody an opportunity to be able to jump in and have some conversation about this. And so um, what I'd love to do is I'd love to start, first of all, and and really kind of talk with you guys, Ken, Teresa, because you guys are leading the front of coaching and have been for some time, just about mm. the why there is a need a for a trusted, wise guide in each one of our journeys. And so I'm just curious, Ken, I don't know if you want to take it first, but I'd love to hear from you. Why is that so important in terms of us finding uh, hope and healing in our process? Yeah. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I would say just in my own personal life, you know, I lost my wife in a car accident and uh, at the age of 47 and uh, went into the valley. And anytime you're in the valley, you're in the dark zone and uh, things that you think will never yeah. happen to you happen to you. And so uh, more than ever, you need a guide. You know, you, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Word, you have other people around you. And those are all helpful, but you need somebody that's traveled through the valley and can actually have a, have a flashlight themselves as you're walking behind them. So I think, you know, just grief uh, causes us to be in a dark place sometimes, in a fog, and having a guy can walk with us. So I think that would be, you know, the biggest thing. You know, for us, nothing is wasted, uh, David. You know, we started this, the coaching uh, concept back in 2019 
And uh, we really decided to kind of offer coaches for a couple different reasons. One is we, I found some studies and you and I talked about it where from Stanford and other places where it's very interesting that uh, if you have a goal in your head, the likelihood of you reaching that goal is only 15 to 20%. Even if you're a disciplined person, mm. you know, say, hey, I'm gonna run a marathon or whatever. If you write it down and put it in a visible place, it goes up 40 to 50%, you know, that you'll do it. Uh, but here's where all the data shows that if you have a partner that walks with you, it goes up 80 to 90%. So we said mm. from the beginning, especially when somebody's in grief, just having a partner that can walk with them, the increase of them walking through the valley in an intentional way goes way, way up. So that would be wow. what would be one of the big reasons that we would say it. The second thing wow. we've experienced is that um, we actually, uh, I love the word guide that you use. We, 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 we use the word coach slash guide, and there's a reason we use coach because we use a lot of C's, and so we wanted to kind of keep that consistent. But really our idea, our, our metaphor is more of the guide idea. We think mm. of the course, paint a purpose course, which is you know the, the main, main way we help people walk through their grief. Uh, we think of it as an 11 mile journey and it has 11 videos, so it's just a way to think about it. You know, the, the course has it. And so uh, anytime you're on a journey, you have trail markers along the way. So our, our approach is uh, we think about us being more a guide with what we call fellow travelers. You know, we don't mm. mind the word client, but we don't really think about it that way. We think about right. we have been through the valley, you know. Now we, and we have been through the 11 mile journey, the course, we've been up and down the terrain quite a bit. And now we can simply uh, link arms with somebody else as a fellow traveler and guide them or walk with them as they go through their own you know, process and their own journey. Uh -huh. I, I do a lot of coaching you know, with Pain to Purpose through for, you know, for widowers, because that's my story. And I understand that journey. Other aspects of the pain yeah. story, I don't understand. I've never ex experienced you know, sexual betrayal or childhood trauma or other things. But I can walk with somebody through the valley, through the course, you know, because uh, I've been there. And so we really think about them mm. being a fellow traveler. So we love the idea of mm. guide, you know, and walking with people. Uh, so those will be the two yeah. or three reasons we think it's so important. The other thing I think is so important is we find that people have a, we call it a, a greater healing, transformative experience if they walk with a coach mm. or a guide through the material. Because the material is excellent. It gives us concepts, ideas. It challenges us. It gives us ways to practice certain things. But if you have a, if you have a guide that's been there, that you can have then one-on-one, -on -one, ongoing conversation, it just goes deeper in uh, the illumination you may have. We call them aha moments at right. time in your own journey. Ideas of practical ways to work through it because we've worked through it as well. And so right. uh, a self, the self-directed course is helpful. But without a doubt, we see two things. One, more people will finish the course if they have a guide because they're partnering mm. with somebody to walk through it. And number two, they'll have a deeper healing transformative experience because they have the back and forth with somebody who's been there. Yeah, yeah, man, that's so good. Uh, you know, it reminds me, uh, Christy and I have been watching this documentary on climbing Mount Everest. And um, it's amazing to me, No, nobody nobody tries to do that without hiring the like local Sherpas who have done it before. Cause it's such a treacherous journey. And I think about that physically, but you know, that's really the journey that we are all in when it comes to trauma, tragedy, major life transition and that how perilous it can be if we don't have a trusted guide, if we don't have a quote unquote Sherpas to help us with that. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer when it comes to that physically, but you know, spiritually it, it for whatever reason, we, we are reticent about yeah, it sometimes. I'm so glad you brought that illustration up. I didn't know that you'd been watching that, but that's an illustration I mm -hmm. use in our coaching placement calls is I say that very same thing. I said, if I was going to hike Mount Everest, I said, guess what I would, the first thing I would do, I would hire a guide or a Sherpa because I've never mm -hmm. been on the trail. I don't know where the danger yep. zones are at. I don't know where to stop. I don't know where to camp, you know, so I want somebody that's been up and down yep. the trail to walk with me. It's a great, it's a mm -hmm. great illustration. Teresa, what about you? I would love to hear your kind of thoughts and heart behind why it, it matters to have a trusted guide in our healing process. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great question. I think, you know, 
when something happens in our life, we experience a trauma, a tragedy, whatever it is, it has a tendency to confuse us, right? Mm. We begin to ask questions like, where's God? And why did this happen to me? And, you know, we get very confused in the process. And so having somebody who can kind of lock arms with you and walk with you through that journey is so helpful. Mm. We yeah. do have a tendency to think, I've got this. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to work through this myself. And then hopefully we get to the point that we realize we need help because it's very difficult to navigate something that big by yourself. So mm. I think I think it's so important that, you know, we kind of have this processing model that we go through with trauma or tragedy. And when we really understand we need to seek help is a big step for us, right? People yeah. struggle to really go, I feel like I need help. But that, you know, the importance of that it helps us through our confusion because we have somebody who can kind of challenge us and ask mm. us questions to kind of challenge our thought process. And it's necessary for us to heal because we can get trapped in our own head and in yeah. our own thoughts and in our own beliefs. So having someone who can challenge us and kind of walk us through that can be incredibly helpful. That's so good. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. You know, Aubrey, I know you and I both have had wise guides in our own journey. Yeah. Um, we can probably point back to, in fact, that's such a phenomenal exercise to look back and go, okay, who are the people at these pivotal mm -hmm. moments very providentially that helped me to yeah. have a perspective shift? There was a yeah. critical juncture in my journey and this is and, you know, for one of the, one of the earliest ones, I've shared this before, but this became a lot of the inspiration behind coaching for nothing is wasted ministries in general is at Amanda's funeral, my late wife's funeral, a guy comes up to me in this long, you know, receiving line, people coming mm -hmm. to offer condolences. He comes up, he goes, you're not gonna remember me um, or anything that happened really tonight, but in two weeks, I'm gonna reach back out to you. But in that moment, he shared a little bit about, hey, my wife and my daughter were murdered and it would kind oh. of caught my attention. And so sure enough, he reached back out to me. We went to Starbucks two weeks later and he said, you know, Davey, this is what happened to me. Um, and he said, I'd love to walk with you because I know what you're going to be experiencing, both mm. from a grief perspective, from navigating like family stuff, moving forward, yeah. potential remarriage, the legal stuff that you're going to be navigating. Mm. He said, I've been there. I've had to do all of it. And this guy wasn't a therapist. Yeah. He, he wasn't a um, pastor. Yeah. He was a lay leader, loves the Lord, lay leader in his church, business owner in our city, very mm -hmm. respected, but he had been down the same road that I'd been down. His name's Todd Herb. Mm. Interestingly enough, at that coffee, he said, and this is only, only God, he said, hey, you guys buried Amanda on the same row in the same cemetery as my wife and daughter. Come on. So oh. you're like, oh, mm -hmm. only God can do that. To yeah. Do that, right. 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 But what, when I, you know, as, as I started having, re, you know, relationship with Todd and his wife, Kathy, and then as Christy and I started our relationship and really going to them. And then we started nothing as wasted ministries. I look back on that. And I go, man, everybody mm. needs a Todd herb in their life. Yeah. that's Everyone right. needs a Todd herb in their life. And that's what I think is so important about having a wise guide who has been down the road. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we say this a lot here at Nothing is Wasted, but how important it is to borrow someone else's faith, especially mm -hmm. when you're walking through trauma and tragedy and grief and suffering. There's so many questions of faith and so many questions of God, even if you're a very mature believer, like suddenly you're like, right. well, wait, what? Right. And so to have someone else to be like, I will carry this for you if you can't carry it. I will hold yeah. faith for you if you can't hold it. I will hold yeah. space for you. I think that alone is is a gift, not to mention all the other things that have been mentioned as well. So it's just a, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing to have a guide. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle and of for, something like this. For many of us, those of you guys who are watching this, you're listening to this, many of you guys, <clears throat> you may not have experienced some of those like providential connections. Mm. And that's why nothing is wasted ministry exists is because we want to facilitate that for you. Yeah. You know, Ken, yeah. I mean, I'd love for, I love when you share this story, Ken, when, you know, you and I met. And it was just such a divine appointment there. I don't know if you want, will you share that a little bit? I know some people have heard that, but that felt like another one of those like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Davey and I met in uh, the fall of 2017. We were both invited to a small leaders retreat. Davey showed up. He was still in the middle of his grief and trying to figure out what was next. He got up in his room. He said his story would be and said, why am I even here? Mm. He said, I don't really want to be here. I said, yes, I came. I'm up here now, you know, and uh, he came downstairs. We all 
we're supposed to meet a certain time in the lobby. They were going to take us out to a meal. And we all came downstairs, kind of introducing ourselves, saying hello. And a guy came up to us and said, hey, you four come with me. Jump in my truck. We'll, we'll, we'll drive. And so I jumped in the front seat. Uh, three guys jumped in the back. I didn't know any of them. Uh, and they started asking Davey about, you know, the trial and stuff. And I was, wow. was listening like, I didn't know Davey, didn't know his story, had no idea who he was. And I was thinking, what's this? I don't even know what this is all about. We later that evening just started our conversation. I drew him out on his journey, his story. And, I, and then he drew me out of mine in my late wife's passing. And we both immediately felt like, you know, this was a divine connection. That was the reason we were there. And we've been, you know, walking as brothers, you know, together since 20, you know, 17. So mm. That's amazing. Jay Robert, Jay Robert Clinton, who does a lot of stuff with helping leaders and people walk through different seasons, stages of their life, says that God will oftentimes in very significant times bring what he calls a divine contact into your life. Mm. Right person at the right time in the yeah. right place. Wow. And we really do need to kind of watch for those and look for those because God knows our journey. He knows what we need. Yeah. And so he'll he'll drop people, you know, sometimes or he'll lead us to people, you know, or lead us to ministries that can help really help us with that. So, yeah. you know, I think about it. One of the things, you know, I say is that especially when we're walking through, you know, grief or confusing seasons, uh, we need a safe place. Yeah. And a skilled surgeon. Mm, Not just good, one yeah. or the other. You yeah. know, we need a safe place and a safe place is good. And a lot of times we can find a safe place. But in the safe place, there may not be the skilled surgeon. And so you really do need both if you're walking through, you know, grief. You need you need a safe place, but somebody that's really trained to walk with you. Yeah, so, so good. So hey, good. we've got some of our coaches here, which is really fun. Our Nothing is Wasted coaches. Jennifer Ball is here. Carissa, Carissa Sprinkles here. And Jen, I, I want to hear from you because you were coached. And now you're a coach, which is so nothing is wasted. I mean, that is just like the heart of nothing is wasted. Um, I, I would love to know from your perspective how, you know, having a guide in your healing was really meaningful and what led you to begin doing it yourself. Yeah, great question. It's so good to be here. Um, thank you. And as Ken was talking about divine connections, I would just say, yes, my journey included a divine connection, looking and knowing I needed help walking through some pain. Mm -hmm. And then that connection to Teresa Glantz, um, just I'm sitting here now because of that connection, which is awesome. amazing. Um, gosh, four years ago, um, I suffered a betrayal, sexual betrayal in my marriage. And that's mm -hmm. what led me it took two years for me to get to the point where I picked up the nothing is wasted program and invested mm -hmm. in the coaching, um, that process, even the timing of that. And I think looking back also, so my life didn't start out with that being the first trauma or first mm -hmm. pain. You know, many of us have things that just unravel and unpeel really, I would yeah. say the first devastating pain happened back in, um, gosh, 10 years ago, we've got mental health issues in our family and, um, children that struggle with mental health issues. And I did not have the skills then that I have now to deal with that trauma. Mm. So I know what it's like to walk through excruciating trauma without the yeah. skills and without the support versus walking through something as horrific as the betrayal trauma with my marriage imploding um, and having that safe person. Um, and Teresa and I, both of our, our pain and trauma is different, but there are similarities in the way the body responds to pain. Mm. And when I compare those two, I would say, and Teresa and I actually had to go back and revisit some of these older traumas. I think we spent just as much time on those as the current trauma wow. of the betrayal. Um, they say with pain, what I've learned is pain turns to trauma, not necessarily because of the actual event, the trauma that has happened or the pain that you're experiencing. It's that you're alone in that pain. Mm, wow. Mm. And so enter in a trusted guide and with coaching, I love it. Um, being on the other side, being coached, and I still have my own therapist, my own coaching, yeah. that journey is continuing. And for me, part of what I learned in that, I think as Christians, so often we think here on, in this world, 
we're going to get everything tied up into a bow, Mm -hmm. nice and neat. And so, especially in my marriage, this push for this marriage to stay together at all costs, you know, that that would be, that would somehow equal um, the right thing. That's what God would want. And recognizing, and I'll preface this by saying my marriage is beautiful now and more fulfilling than I ever dreamed. You know, I think I prayed decades. We just celebrated, um, it'll be 34 years of marriage this July. Awesome. So, but decades of pain, you know, praying, heartbreaking, knowing something was not right, but not knowing what, but just feeling like I needed to push through and keep that marriage together. Part of my healing was letting go of that expectation Mm -hmm. and being willing to work on my side of the garden, you know, being willing to focus on me. We had gone to, um, before I entered into the coaching with nothing is wasted. I'm so grateful for a pastor and friend that, that we had that suggested that we go to family, focus on the families, hope restored. It's, a uh, mm. you can do group therapy. So here we go. The group, the, the one thing you want to do when you are in the midst of something like this is isolate because it's shameful. Yeah. Yeah, mm. It is. You want to pull back and that's yeah. Satan comes in and evil comes in there in mm-hmm. that isolation. It is so important to push through that. Um, and I think that group therapy with focus on the family, one of the therapists said to, to us as a group, and I'll tell you, I did not want to go. Who wants to go and bury your soul to six other strangers, right? right? right. About things that are, um, but they started out and it's kind of like I did an exhale after this comment. The therapist said, we cannot promise that your marriage is going to make it, but we can promise that if you lean in and engage to your own healing you will be better Mm. because of it. So it's that, um, knowing that God loves me no matter the outcome. Yeah. He loves me. It's like that grip on making this marriage work at all costs, letting go of it kind of freed my husband up for healing too. Mm. Um, Wow. wow. Yeah. Very powerful, Jen. I I feel like you even just, you even just sharing that like broke something open. I think for our listeners, it like, that's a little woo woo, but actually mean that spiritually. And that's what can happen in coaching, right? Like you're sharing your story, you're sharing your vulnerability, you're sharing what God has done. And then like healing just happens. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, we also are joined by Carissa Sprinkle. Carissa, you've been on the Nothing Is Wasted podcast a few times. You guest co-hosted. You're one of our coaches as well. And um, you've done a whole lot of coaching, uh, especially recently. It's really mm-hmm. something you've been stepping into quite a bit, you know, and and, and you're working with, uh, mostly working with women and you're helping them as as they're shifting their perspectives. And But I'm, I'm curious, a couple of things. One, um, what do you see when you are working with women in terms of, how coaching helps to shift a perspective or, or really provide a reflection, you know, an appropriate reflection into how they're experiencing their trauma. And then, you know, as a follow-up to that, how has it been, you know, further a conduit of healing for you? So maybe take one of those first. And then, cause I just know, I know you personally, we're a part of a small group together. We have a lot more close interaction with stuff. So I know that this has been, even in the coaching process been such a healing journey for you as well. And it just helps to enhance that. So first of all, what do you see when you're helping other people and how coaching really shifts perspectives? Mm. Yeah, great question. And I just, I love being a part of this community and I'm humbled to be sharing space with you all. And I just love the work we get to do. So yeah, this it's such a good question. I think um, so much of what I've seen in my coaching experience, and just the theme that we see with trauma is it's such a um, it's such a, a disconnector. It fragments. Mm-hmm. It fragments you down to your soul. Yeah. And so I think in these spaces, I so often get women who come in who feel like the odd one out. They feel so alone. They feel so isolated. They feel so confused. And I think such a large part of this coaching process is being able to have the freedom and the permission 
to have this experience the way that you need to have it and not have mm. it alone. Wow. So naming what it is that, that they're experiencing and giving them permission. It's okay to feel this and this, and here's what's really going on internally. And they don't have a lot of spaces where they feel normal or capable in, in because mm. of what they're going through. Um, and I do, I work with a lot of sexual betrayal, trauma. That is our story. And in that specifically, it's so common um, for, for women to lose trust in themselves, lose trust in God and lose trust in other people. Mm. And so this is a space where um, they have the safety to really get honest about where they're mm. at what they're experiencing, how fragmented they feel. And in some ways it almost makes them feel, um, it normalizes their experience. Yeah. In doing that, I just see them start to feel more free, more confident, more in control of their experience. They have more tools and it is so disorienting to go through tragedy, to go through any kind of trauma and not understand what's happening to you. Yeah. That is just a horrible feeling. And we we all know what it's like. And so to come in and, and have somebody be able to name it and normalize it and guide you through it, that in and of itself restores a sense of trust and confidence. And that, that guides the healing journey. Mm -hmm. And so I like to kind of say we're an advocate too. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, what next? I'm here to advocate for you. Yeah. So and good. just sort of be in their corner on this journey. Mm. Beautiful. That's so good. Really. Yeah, so, it really it, is. Wow. So fulfilling. Take, take that, take that follow-up question to Carissa. And then, you know, yeah. I want to hear the same thing from you, Jen, mm -hmm. but obviously we're all in progress. We're, we never get to this place of destination. Right. And that's where like kind of climbing Mount Everest metaphor can break down. Cause like we get to the peak and you conquer it and you put the thing there, the, the flag and you're like, woo. Yeah. You know, and then, but we're really at, in this lifetime, we're going to continually experience more and more pain and hardship. Jesus didn't pull the wool over our, our eyes. Yeah. He didn't pull any punches. Like he is <clears throat> clear with us in this world. We're going to experience trouble and we're continually becoming more and more like the image of, of Christ. And part of his work in catalyzing that is suffering. So this coaching and helping other people has also been a conduit of healing for you as well, or your continued healing. Yeah. Talk to me about that a little bit. And I'd love to hear from you on that, Jen. Yeah. It's, it's been a huge part of my healing. Um, I think one of the biggest things is I just remember when this happened to me, I didn't really know who to call. I didn't know mm -hmm. who would really understand and there is a lot more resources available. I think even now our whole world sort of blew up about seven years ago. And I do see an increase in just the help available and the knowledge yeah. and the understanding. Yeah. Um, but it's just such an isolated feeling. And I think when you go through it, you feel like you're the only one who's been mm -hmm. through that or who is in that. You're like, yeah. how did I get stuck with the worst story? How did I get put in this position? And so I think we've all had those people reach out and walk us through that. So I think one of the, the most healing things for me is being able to have women come into my circle, into my zoom room mm -hmm. and me be able to say, okay, it's, it, it'll be okay. I can actually tell you the parts that will get better. Wow. And it may not be for several years. It may not be for this long, whatever, but I, I can, offer you tools and information and a shoulder and someone who really gets it. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really fulfilling to be able to help someone else, maybe not have quite as isolating of an experience as I did in those early weeks yeah. and days and months. Mm -hmm. And so, and likewise, I think it's just in, in addition to that, I think it's just really fulfilling to see the way God continues to grow and develop this ministry and it, it really does feel like, okay, that wasn't for nothing. Mm. And wow. I think it, it wasn't, it wasn't yep. useless. It wasn't wasted. Mm -hmm. It actually, I've always been passionate about leading women, ministering to women, but I remember years and years ago, just lacking direction. How do I actually help women? And yeah. here I am all these years later feeling like I know exactly how I want to help women. Wow. And it's not the way I would have chosen but I'm just really thankful for how God 
his whole mo is is making things new and redeeming things. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's so good, Carissa. I I'd love to hear the same thing from you, Jen. How has as you've coached others, how has God used that in your own healing journey? Yeah, that might be my most favorite question. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, he is so good and he loves us so much and yeah. he is bringing beauty from those ashes, right? Amen. Amen. I think um for myself as I've walked along others that are suffering, you know, some that's suffering that hasn't turned into total trauma, some that are in the midst of trauma. And more often than not, they come just like I did with Teresa with a certain event that's happening or has happened most recently. And we, as we look at it, we begin to unravel. Usually mm -hmm. there's layers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think sitting, I think that this, what I have learned in my training, more important than any of the psychology that I've learned, the biology about how the body works is developing an, a, a skill to attune mm -hmm. to my client. So that would be um, allowing my client to feel felt. Mm -hmm. So if I, and it's kind of that verse also though, you know, if I have all this knowledge in my head, I can give it to the person, but if I don't have love, yeah, what use is right. it? Right? right. And so as that happens, when we're journeying together, yeah, you develop, I love coaching because it is not the top down that mm -hmm. therapists have, right. It's more peer to peer. So mm -hmm. we're fellow travelers that maybe we're a couple steps ahead because we've been through it. We face the dark valley valley. Mm -hmm. Um, but recognizing also that everyone's journey is different. Um, mm -hmm. And that each person as a Christian, if they are a Christian, they've got the Holy Spirit in them. So really me tapping into that knowledge that is there, you know, already. Yeah. Um, and I would say the other picture that I like to look at it, it's almost as if the traumas that have happened in my life, um, I would not wish them on my worst enemy because mm. the feeling is awful. Mm. You know, it's yeah. days, weeks, months, face down, weeping, yeah. feeling lost, feeling alone, yeah, feeling like life is over. Like, um, but as I've moved through that and allowed the emotions to move through me rather than avoiding it and slapping a platitude on it, you know, to move on, to be the strong person, allowing myself to be weak, mm. um, facing the truth. I would look at, you would think that pain and joy are on a number line, like pain would be negative 100, joy is positive 100. Yeah. And what I found is that, and I think the science is showing this also, I look at it more like a circle, pain being here, joy being here, they're really a lot closer. Mm. Wow. There's something in the suffering that we go through that taps into a joy that is deeper than anything personally I've experienced. Wow. And I think, I think actually the studies are showing also that your capacity to lean into pain widens your capacity to experience mm. joy. Mm. Yes. And I can't quote where that comes from, but yes. I have experienced that in my own life. Yeah. I love that. And I've said this before, but that Powerful. was one of the, one of the most pivotal moments, you know, with my counselor early on in my journey was when he said you can't selectively numb mm. but if you if you try to numb the pain that you're experiencing right now by developing maladaptive coping mechanisms or escaping it you're going to inevitably numb the joy that you want to experience on the other side of this because numbing emotions numbs emotions and i was like wow that's so true and so i think so you're talking about something really critical right there jen that these two things are growing our capacity to experience <laughs> pain is also growing our capacity to experience joy. It's almost like what Paul said, I must share in his, I want to share in his resurrection. I must share in his mm. suffering in order to do that. It's good. Oh, man. I love how this becomes so much a part of our, not only helping other people in our journey also comes back, you know, to refresh us, like refreshing others refreshes yeah. you too, is what scripture tells us. We comfort others in the same way that we've been comforted. It's also really, it, it helps to write the story of redemption in our own story. And often what I'll, what I'll say is redemption is not when God 
restores back to you what the enemy has stolen from you, so to speak. But redemption is when you decide, no matter what is going to happen moving forward, I'm going to leverage this pain that I've experienced to help other people. That's when redemption really takes place in our mm, life. Mm. And so um, I love that that's what you guys are actively stepping into, Carissa, Jen, Teresa. I mean, all of you yeah. guys, and you're helping other people. You're going, yeah. you know what? Now, Scripture does promise, hey, he's faithful. He's going to restore. Yeah, There is going to be a day where everything is going to be fully and finally redeemed and restored. That's right. But there is this active participation that we have here on this side of eternity where we decidedly choose. I'm not going to be put on the shelf. I'm not going to be paralyzed by this, right? That there is a price that has been paid for me to be able to exchange, redeem a gift card, right? Someone bought mm -hmm. this gift card with a price so that I could be taken off the shelf. And his name is Jesus. And by the cross and the empty tomb, he paid that price so I can be put back into utilitarian use for the kingdom. And I'm not going to let pain paralyze me in this. And so that's really, I love that that's what, what you guys are actively stepping mm -hmm. into. Yeah, totally. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's so, so good. I, I feel like I have so many questions of all the coaches, but I, <laughs> I do, I do want to take it back to Ken and Teresa. Um, I would love to know from you, like for people who don't know what coaching is, I think there's probably some misconceptions that coaching is therapy. Jen, you kind of just talked about mm. that or that coaching is spiritual direction. Like there's categories, I think. Um, maybe Ken will go to you. How is coaching different than let's say mentoring, let's say therapy, something like that. Yeah. There's a lot of different discussion on that. The way I think we see it with what we do with nothing is wasted, you know, is uh, we see again, coaching more as a guide that can walk with you. You know, a counselor can get and open the hood and maybe figure out what needs to be fixed. And so some of our coaches are counselors. A mentor is somebody who's one or two steps ahead of you in some area of skill, maybe, or life that you match up just to learn something. You know, and the spiritual director is somebody who walks alongside of you to kind of help you hear what the spirit may be saying to you in your journey. But a coach is really drawing out of where you're at and where you want to go and helping you get that, to get mm. there. So that's how I see, you know, really the difference between coaching and counseling. Of course, they they cross over in some degree. Sometimes you are going to mentoring, you know, you, yeah. you can put on a different hat. Sometimes there is opening the hood to help them kind of figure things out. But in general, coaching is drawing out where they're at and how to help them move forward with where they want to go. That's good. So again, that's how we see it. But again, I love the idea of a guide, especially with what we do in Pain to Purpose. Mm -hmm. So good. What what is you know, Teresa? Maybe you want to talk about this a little bit. But there is some there are some things that make the coaching that we do mm -hmm. unique, and mm -hmm. it does feel like that. You know, we, and I tell our team this all the time that we're not the point of this whole thing. We're not the only ones doing what we're doing. So it's not like we're oh look at us, right? But yeah, but we do play a very specific part, and I think it's really important to recognize for all of us, every single person individually, what's the part that God has asked us to play in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Because that's really where you begin to discover your purpose. It's like yeah. this is what God built me for yeah. individually. I think that's true for an organization too. And that's what we have been uncovering over the past few years. Oh, this is what makes us unique as an organization and what we offer the world. And I wonder if you want to unpack that a little bit, Teresa, like what is unique about the coaching specifically that we offer? Mm -hmm. Hi, friend. One of the questions we get asked most frequently here at Nothing Is Wasted is how do I help my friend who has just experienced a trauma, tragedy, or major life transition? We know there are so many of you who listen to our podcast and who follow the work we do because you want to help those you love as they walk through a difficult season. We love the compassionate hearts of those within the Nothing Is Wasted community and appreciate your desire to help bring healing and hope to the many and to the one, which is why I wanted to share with you a resource that we have called When Everything Changes, Navigating the Early Days of Loss, Trauma, and Tragedy. In this four session mini course, participants will hear from me, as well as Davey Blackburn, our founder, and also the podcast co-host, Aubrey Sampson. Aubrey is also the author of The Louder Song, a best-selling book on lament. I'll share with you practical ways to walk them through whatever valleys they found themselves in recently. We know our Pain to Purpose course is such a helpful and proven pathway for those who have had a little time to process their pain, but we wanted to also have something for those who are in the immediate aftermath of their lives changing forever. 
This is a great resource that you can purchase and share with your friend who has found themselves in a story very different from what they expected. In each session, they will get practical wisdom on what to expect in those early days, how to lament, and what support they need as they go through this marathon of healing. If you'd like to send this to a hurting friend, simply go to nothingiswasted.com slash everything changes and select the course when everything changes gift option. We are so grateful for compassionate individuals like you who are willing to step into the pain of those they love and walk them through it. And we hope you'll find resources like this course and this podcast to be the tools you need to help those who are struggling when everything changes. Well, I think part of it, you know, even in my own running my own business as a trauma coach, people are, they want to partner with someone who has the same belief as them, right? So Mm. primarily, I mean, I made it very clear. I led with my faith foot, I said. So I made it very clear (laughs) as a coach that I was a Christian, right? So that that's really important to a lot of people is that they're looking for somebody, you know, we have a tendency to maybe if we're not with a believer, we're sort of like, oh, I don't know if I believe that, right? So we might struggle a little bit if we're not with a believer. So when we lock arms with other believers, you know, we're part of the body. And I think there's something beautiful that God does there when we have people who are believers. And I think the beauty of this ministry is we lead with that, right? We, it's very clear who we are in this ministry. And so, first of all, I think it's a, a wealth of knowledge and resources that we have in nothing is wasted, but in the coaching, what I really love, first of all, I love the pain to purpose curriculum. I did the curriculum before we were still printing the workbook. And I mean, wow. it was a, it, it, I don't even know that True. coaching was part of it. I That's was like, awesome. you know, yeah. it's, I still have it. I like early, it early beta, early beta. <laughs> That's awesome, Teresa. <laughs> yes. And like, I would sit in my living room and just pause it and underline and highlight and play and pause. And I kept saying to my husband, listen, this is incredible. Mm. Like, this is so good. Then I had one of my friends do it. And I was like, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's where I'm at. <laughs> and she would be like, this is so good. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. we're on to something, right? But the beauty about what we offer, lots of times, because there's confusion in trauma and tragedies, right? We get very confused. People like something that they know where they're going, right? They're mm-hmm. like, and so often when I'm doing my coaching on this, you know, my, my trauma coaching, people go, what are my steps? What am I going to do? Right. Mm. And it always, not always worked that way. The beauty about what pain to purpose offers is it's very clear where we're headed. They can look ahead in the workbook and go, okay. Yeah. Going. yeah. And that brings comfort to people. They don't feel like I'm in this blind. I can see where I'm going. I know where we're headed. I know what our next conversation is going to be about. And um, they feel safe in that because it feels like I know where I'm going. And then, you know, we've worked, Ken and I have worked together with the coaches. We know these coaches, we know Mm -hmm. them well, we know their stories. Um, These are people who fiercely love Jesus and they all have their own pain story. And we we're trying to partner people with someone who has a similar pain story, probably not the exact pain story, but when you can look someone in the eye and say to them, I want you to know I've been there. Mm. I've, been, I've been where you are. Yeah. I promise you can get through this. Yeah. We want to see walking, living examples of people who've been through what we've been through and they made it, right? right. Like, yeah. did you make it? And and I think that's the beauty of what we offer through Nothing is Wasted with the coaching. We can partner you with somebody who has a similar pain story these people were working to get them all trauma informed. So they have a really good foundation of what is trauma? How do we navigate this? How do we work well with trauma survivors? So I just think there's nothing like it out there. Totally. And it's not like there's one coach. When I was individually coaching on my own, it got to the point where I said, I can't keep doing this. It's, I felt terrible to say no to people because I could, I didn't have the bandwidth. Mm. Now, We've got all these coaches. There's plenty bandwidth there. We can partner you with somebody. We can take that burden off of you of trying to find somebody. Tell us what's going on and we're going to find somebody for you. And so Mm. I think that's the beauty in what we offer. It's super unique, but man, it is going to fit a lot of people. And I just love the idea that the ministry offers this along with so many other things, Mm. but course this is my wheelhouse i love this stuff so i'm really excited yeah it's good that's awesome oh it's so good 
Teresa, we're going to come back to. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Aubrey. I'm gonna no, I was going to say the same thing. I do want to come back to Teresa because I yeah. I want to hear more about her new role. But I I right. wanted to it, I wanted to ask Ken the same question. What what makes the coaching here at Nothing Is Wasted? Love it. Special, unique, and also I think connected to the larger ministry that God has been doing here. Right. Well, uh, I made a few notes when Teresa was speaking, and she she hit it all. She did an awesome job. <laughs> she got let, it. Let me give a real quick. You know, here's where I was going, but she said it even in a better way. You know why? I think there's an intentional path, which is the course, like she said. Mm -hmm. So you you have an idea where you're going, how to get there. You know, we wouldn't say it's paint by numbers, but it, we. We know where we're going. It's not just let's dig around and see what may happen, you know. So there's intentionality number two. All of our coaches have their own pain story, and that's very unique with what we do. So we try to match you up with that, you know. Number three, she talked about we're now moving be more and more for all of our coaches to be trauma informed. They may not be trauma certified. Some of them are, but we bring we brought that into the into the dynamic of it. And the other thing I would say, you know, is that I think one of our values, you know, as a ministry is that we are, you know, we are wounded healers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our coaches aren't just compassionate. Hey, this is a good idea. I like counseling. I'll try it here with you guys, you know, but they've all, so I think that, that, that's their wounded healers. The other thing I would say is that we believe uh, on the, uh, the spirit empowerment for journeying together and for being healed mm, so good we have some tools that are excellent and we're trained i think in a you know in a skillful way but that's not what we rely upon the content helps but you know we do he's the only good and perfect shepherd that's right <laughs> and he's the only one who knows what's happening in our own soul he's yeah. the only one who's who knows what's happening next in our life and how to get us there mm. So I think as a guide and a coach, you know, we try to enter into that and we really train our coaches in that way. So it's not just mechanical. It's not just, you know, blindly leads you through something. Uh, I always mm. say that a good coach um, uh, in a good coaching session, it's a three-way conversation. Mm. Me, the person, I'm, you know, my fellow traveler, but Jesus. Yeah, that's so good. And so he's, because he is the healer. So I would say that. So I love uh, David does a session with some of the stuff we do that also informs what we do. You know, we would say that, you know, the material is biblically and Christ centered. Mm. It's spirit empowered. And then it's trauma informed. That's and great. for us, that's the three legged stool that we think is holistic and balanced and what we need to move forward. Mm. So good. Yeah, so it is. Good. Wow. I always, I always love going back to the, like origin stories and that maybe that's part of my role as the founders to remind people like why we, why we even got here. Like what was that? We didn't just like come up with this, but one of the things <laughs> that became apparent early on in the story of nothing is wasted is that people needed that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Again, it was like, everyone needs a Todd Herb in their life. And so Christy and I started coaching people at the very beginning in 2019, when we started, nothing is wasted. And Ken was on our board. And Ken was like, man, I love now he was, he had his own, he was coaching pastors and in his own season of doing some coaching of ministry leaders and, and uh, marketplace leaders. He's like, I love what you're doing with coaching, but this is not scalable or sustainable. Mm. You can't coach it. There's so much need out there. So mm. many people in pain. There's no way you will kill. It was almost like a Jethro's advice kind of moment, right? Yeah. It was like, what you are doing is not good for you or for the people you've got to <laughs> commission other people to do this. And so he said that he said, you need to find other people that could coach people and you certify them. I'm like, Ken, I have no idea how to do that. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, <laughs> I'm just coaching people myself. And then it dawned on me. It was like this beautiful Holy spirit aha moment between the two of us. I was like, but you know how to do that. <laughs> so, so we said, Hey, will you, can you step off the board and actually come on staff with us and, and do this? And so he That's developed awesome. out the entire coaching process. Ken, I'm curious, and maybe you share with us, when did it become apparent for you and why that this role needed a shift for you and we needed to find somebody else to really take the helm, take the helm of that. Well, we've been honored and humbled that, you know, God has been using nothing is wasted. You know, we mm -hmm. think, I think there's a certain season open window in the, in the life of the church right now and in the world with the whole idea of, you know, really uh, true healing for us who are broken. Yeah. And so we've continued to see a lot of growth that's really been occurring that God's doing and we're not just, uh, in our own ingenuity, pushing forward. And so, uh, you know, our, our challenge has been the last, I would say, you know, the last year or two that uh, so many doors are opening and so many opportunities that uh, the bandwidth, because uh, I've help, i been helping with 
churches that are doing the, the course on in their churches now and doing some other stuff and traveling with Davey and doing a little speaking with to pastors and other other leaders. So that was a big one is just I could not really keep up with the demand that was happening e either in caring for our coaches, training our coaches or all the coaching placement calls that were coming in. So that would be one. So we really needed to scale, you know, so we could uh, provide, I think, better, better service. Uh, and then the second thing is how we would say it is we also need to strengthen what we had done because mm. we started in 2019 and it was kind of like, okay, let's try this. What are we going to do? Here's, <laughs> here's some ideas. And we've learned along the way and it's been four years now, you know, and it's been, uh, it's been helpful. And I think we've had, we've helped a lot of, you know, we've had a lot, helped a lot of people, but I think I knew I had hit the wall in my own ability mm -hmm. and in my own uh, time. And we need someone who was someone who was younger, brighter, faster, quicker, smarter. <laughs> so we went out and hired it. We, no, we got Teresa, but Teresa has been a part of our family. Like she said from the beginning, she's had her own journey with us. She knows who we are. She carries our DNA. Yeah. But she's also very, very skilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's also a great leader. So I've already seen her since we've been building the bridge to move it more toward her and strengthening what we're doing and all the different ways and the yeah. training and our systems and then the scaling so we can really, really even service more and more yeah. people who want to guide, who want to move along. Yeah. So well, I am very, very happy with this. <laughs> and what's <laughs> beautiful are. about making this transition to, you know, we'll get to Teresa and say, but what's beautiful about it for Ken is that it opens us the opportunity to um, do some things that are really like in Ken's wheelhouse in terms of our work with pastors and ministry leaders mm -hmm. and helping them become whole and healthy as they're leading organizations to become, you know, whole and healthy. And so, yeah. you know, we have um, all the stuff that we do with the healing leader now. And, and Ken, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're, or you're watching this and you're a pastor or a church leader, and you're moving in seasons of what we would call convergence, where everything's kind of coming to a space where you're recognizing God's got a new season for you of stepping into, you know, something that it seems like everything's been leading up to this and maybe a transition or crisis, and you're experiencing your own crisis of leadership, crisis of, you know, tragedy, trauma, but you're going, okay, how does this affect what I'm leading to? That's one of the areas that Ken is really spearheading now is as we help leaders heal and be able to lead other organizations that can be healing, um, healing places for people. And so I love, I love the fact that we're able to to step into that now. Yeah. It's so awesome. Oh, so, so many good things that God is doing here at nothing is wasted. Yeah. We're all so really many. excited about that. Yes. yes so yeah. many, um, Teresa, we, we keep hinting at this, but now we want to swing it back to you. So you're in this new role. Mm -hmm. Tell us, I mean, why you're excited, but also what your vision is, what's your hope for the nothing is wasted community. Yeah. I love that. You know, Ken had reached out to me and he's like, hey, have you ever, you know, we're kind of looking for somebody who can really take over the coaching. And do you mind if I send you a job description, take a look at it? So I looked at it and I, you know, of course, praying about where's my bandwidth? What can I take on? Mm -hmm. And I just sat at my computer one day and I was like, Lord, if that was mine, what would I do? What would I mm -hmm. do? And I just started mm -hmm. typing out. I started dreaming as big as I could dream. Ultimately, I think Ken got a three page proposal for me of like, <laughs> Here's all the things I think we should do. That's that's fitting, Teresa, because every time I get something from Ken, it's a three-page proposal. <laughs> well, too, so. There you go. There takes, you I'm go. like, I got to sit down for about an hour and read this. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. I just started dreaming really big. And at one point I felt myself like, whoa, I better slow down. This is, I'm really, I'm really putting a lot into this, but I've been in the space. I've been a trauma coach now for five years, right? I've been certified in trauma as a believer, as a pastor's wife, um, I've been in this space it, and I've loved nothing is wasted from the mm. onset of my journey. Nothing is wasted has played a role in that. Mm. I, I kind of semi stalk Davey, like, Hey, how do you, how do people get on your podcast? Right. Cause I was like, <laughs> I want to share my story. I want to get out there. So, um, so to be able to sit in this chair, listen, in my darkest moments, I could have never imagined how God mm. would purpose my journey. Never. Mm. The people mm. I've been able to impact, the um, how God has used my own story to come alongside women who then go, hey, I want to do what you're doing. I'm like, yeah. that's awesome. So wow. to be able to come under the ministry and bring that with me, dreaming about 
you know, I told Ken, I said, I feel like I'd really like to get all of the coaches to the place that they're at least trauma informed, right? There's a difference mm -hmm. between trauma trained or certified yeah. trauma informed. We're kind of skimming the top of a lot of trauma and we're training them on that right now. So they have a better understanding of what happens. How do we define trauma? What does that look like? Right. All yeah. of those things. So, so good. we're bringing everybody to that level. So they're all trauma informed. We do have coaches that are trauma certified and we have others that are therapists. So the nice thing is we have a lot of different people who can help. Um, and then dreaming about how do we onboard somebody, right? So uh, Ken and I have talked a lot about how to get this process, you know, a slick, easy process for people to come on, find a coach. How do we get them onboarded so we can get them to a coach? Um, right. I mean, I've dreamed as big as I can dream, all kinds of things that I think we could do. But I do have to back up sometimes because I can be like that. I can be like, okay, you know, <laughs> right? So and I kind of left some stuff off the proposal. And then later I said to Ken, what do you think about this? I sort of sent it in a separate proposal. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> That's right. Like, what do you think if we did this? And Ken was like, I love it. Let's do it. You know, so I, I have... I, I'm super excited to be here and to be part of the family of Nothing is Wasted. More importantly, to come alongside the coaches and be a support to the coaches, help yeah. to train them and be a solid support for them when they're maybe struggling with a fellow, you know, with somebody that's come on board and they're not sure where to go with them, that I can yeah. be a resource for that and try to help them and also help nurse their souls, right? These are people yeah. who are pouring out every day. How do we create spaces that we can support the coaches as well? Um, and then, of course, ultimately, for the travelers that join us, you right. know, my goal, I may not meet them face to face, but I know who they're working with and we yeah. can be really prayerful for them. And I know what a difference this can make for somebody. Mm -hmm. It can help them out of that pit. So, yeah, awesome. I'm I'm so excited to be here. If you can't That's tell. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been smiling mind the whole time because you can see how she yeah. is you know it just comes out of her she's not yeah. passionate at all <laughs> no, not at all not at oh, that's all that's awesome well and i love what it's going to do you know on the coaching front i also love teresa the the value you're going to add on the front for our local churches i think that's a unique space yeah. that you a seat that you sit in and in the fact that you know you have worked in local church ministry for a long time you know mm -hmm with um uh with you know your husband your husband's role at a local church and then you guys even mm -hmm. running pain to purpose at Granger community and all of the different things that the way God's woven all of this together but you know we see that on the local church front we're like hey we need to continually equip mm -hmm. our facilitators who are operating this way to be more trauma informed yeah. so it's just uh, across the board this is going to be such a, a holistic enhancement yeah. So what we're able to offer to the nothing is wasted community. So I'm I'm Absolutely. so excited about that. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd love to, you know, Teresa, share a little bit about the class that you have coming up. Mm -hmm. You've got something and, and I want to make sure people are, because right now it's like a last, it's like, Hey, this is your last chance to get into this. Right. But right. share who that's for, what that is, you know, yep. so a little information on that. Sure. So it will be a class where people can earn a certification so they can be a biblical trauma care specialist. And ultimately what that means is we're going to kind of take you into trauma, help you understand a little bit the trauma survivor from that aspect. Um, we are, it'll be nine weeks that we're going to take them through this. It'll be a live class that they can attend um, and really it's for people who are in the space of care, right? So we've got lots of churches who have care pastors. They have people, um, who are in the field of care. These are maybe people who are leading the pain to purpose course that can get a little bit more training for them specifically and, and get a certification so that yeah. they can say, I have the certification. I understand trauma That's awesome. better. Yeah. It also is just for people who want to understand trauma better. So, They'll do some of their own work in the class yeah. on their own trauma, and it can be helpful in your family, friends, anybody that's around you. It's not a class that you'll be a coach, right? When you're done, you're not going to be a certified coach, but you'll be a specialist and it'll be an area that you can really use um, in all areas of your life. So I'm really excited about this class. Yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, it I'm sounds excited. phenomenal. Oh, yeah, it sounds so good. We'll put the link right where in the yeah. show notes so that you can go and register for that class. You can get in on it kind of here in the last minute, um, you know, but you do need to jump on it. If that's something you're interested in, you need to jump on it right away because it is 
uh, it could possibly be filled up by the time we're recording this. So I don't know, mm -hmm. but we will, like Teresa said, we will offer it again yes. um, in the future. But in case it's not filled up at this point, you can jump in on, at the last minute here. Yeah, it looks so, so good. We're going to tell you in just a minute, because I know all of our listeners are like, okay, but how do I get a coach? I'm in. How do I do it? <laughs> yep, We're going to yep. tell you about that in just a minute. But I I do want to give Carissa and Jen one more chance here. Any final thoughts? Like as you've just been listening and uh, we both know that you, we all know that your heart is really for coaching and for the hurting person to to walk with them and meet with them and and really um, guide them. That's a language that we've been using. Any just final thoughts that God has put on your mind? What I would say to someone who is currently experiencing pain, um, that it's really normal to want to isolate. Mm. Um, and I would just encourage you not to isolate. Um, the coaching is a great option through the paint a purpose course. Um, often what people find and myself, I've been surrounded by family and friends who love me, mm. but when pain and trauma hits, often what happens is those people that have been your ride or die, they can't stand with you in that really? place. Wow. That's and so, so what's the alternative? You know, a lot of the time people find themselves isolating, feeling alone. No one gets me. And I think recognizing that this coaching working through this paint a purpose coach or course with a coach um is an option and that it is normal to not want to do that because we mm. don't want to bear the ugliness in us or the pain in us um but my encouragement would be to push past that it's so mm. worth it it's so yeah. worth it that's great so good so good what about you carissa yeah i just want to chip in what I love so much about this and even especially having Teresa come in into the position that she is, she kind of mentored me through more trauma training. And mm. what I love is so many people who go through trauma of all kinds, especially relational trauma is it often hinders or injures their relationship with God too, and their relationship with the church and other believers, the people who are supposed to carry them where they're supposed to feel safe and so one thing I found, and this is just even a part of our story, is so many people feel like they have to leave their Christian circle. They have to leave the church to mm. get true help. And so I love how the coaches here, especially with the trauma-informed piece of it, are able to enter into this place where we can be your safe place. We can be your advocate while you heal and then you start bringing more people in and we're helping equip churches and leaders to know what to do with addiction and mental health and all these really messy, ugly components that is prevalent in every church because there's humans filling every yeah. church. <laughs> and so just for those who feel like the people who should feel safe to me, the God who should feel safe to me, but doesn't, mm. that is such a normal piece of recovering from trauma and yeah. and we get that so many of us we get that and we've walked that and that's wow. been a huge part of my story and why I just want to say there are safe places for you this is one of them and it's mm -hmm. so important that you find one while you're on that journey and eventually it'll mm -hmm. open up and your healing will give you so much more opportunity and relationship but it's so good so yeah good. So good. don't do this alone yeah, wow. so good. One of the things I love about, you know, as uh, Carissa, you've been coaching people, I find it, this has happened multiple times. I feel like that someone will get through the pain to purpose material with you and they're like, I want to, I want to keep diving deeper into some stuff. And they, and you continue this coaching relationship with them yes. in that. And so I That's think awesome. this goes beyond just it's, you transcend it beyond just the pain to purpose material. Mm. This is, there's so much to unpack. And as we're trying to become, uh, whole people from the the fracturing mm -hmm. circumstances that have taken mm -hmm. place in our life. So I really mm -hmm. appreciate what you guys are doing. It's, it's an incredible thing. Uh, okay. We've got to tell everybody how they can <laughs> really, we got to get, get there. Coach, right? <laughs> <laughs> this has been, this has been awesome. So, so um, if you, if you are interested in um, uh, having a coach assigned to you, or if you're interested in even becoming a coach, the best place to go would be nothing is wasted dot com slash coaching. The first step is a coaching placement call. Okay. So even all of our future coaches that we start to 
bring into the ranks. There's a long process for that. It's not for everybody to become a coach. I just want to yeah. give you that, that caveat. But even all of those coaches uh, that we bring on in the future, they will have to have gone, one of the requirements is to go through this with a coach, to actually experience this. So the first step would be nothingiswasted.com slash coaching and click the button right there that says uh, schedule a coaching placement call. And then what will happen is you'll get on a Zoom call with one of our um, one of our coaches or one of our, so it might be Ken, it might be Amy, it might be Teresa, it might be one of these coaches and they'll listen to your story. They'll kind of start to assess some of that. And then they use that information to be able to help place you with the, the appropriate coach. Um, and so that's going to be your best next step. Do you guys add it? You want to add anything to that? Because, you know, here I am trying to give you the, the nuts and bolts and Teresa, you, you guys are the ones masterminding it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's spot on. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to try to get with them and, and find out where they're at in their journey, um, mm. and what their pain point is. And then, um, you know, ask the Lord, okay, who's going to be a good fit for them? Who's going to be a good fit in personality in, yeah. um, also in pain point. And yeah, we're going to partner them with someone. So yeah, That's we're, awesome. we're going to make it as easy as possible. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Guys, this uh, has been incredible. This, this has been, has been amazing. So awesome. yeah. been amazing. I love what you guys I want to coach again. I think I want uh, I need to be coached again. <laughs> I want to be coached again. It's so good. <laughs> What's funny is we're all the unbeknownst to our community is listening to this, watching this right now. We're all being coached. <laughs> yeah, that's and true. Normally, and, and truthfully, we all go to Ken Roberts for our coach. Uh, that's actually accurate. <laughs> that's a, that is the true. Coach. Well, you true. heard what Carissa said. She was basically saying, I'm glad Ken isn't doing anymore. Now Teresa is. So, you know, <laughs> now I'm I'm wounded. I do need a coach right now. Ken, we learned <laughs> so much for no, me. Chris, I <laughs> need you. We need no. you. Yeah. We do. I'm, we need you. That's amazing. I, I'd uh, love to. I'd love to end this in a little bit of a different way, Aubrey. I'm wondering. I want to put you on the spot for a second. I wonder if you'd pray for our our community. I would love to. Because I think this is a critical juncture for a lot of people mm. as they're going. Okay, this mm. can seem like a big investment of time, of resources, mm. and sometimes yeah. that can feel very limiting. And yeah. so, um, but this is also we like we said at the beginning of this. You know, as Ken brought to our attention that with J. Robert Clinton, that there always is. In our journeys, there's going to be some of these critical junctures. Where we go, okay, yeah. God's putting somebody else in my path, a wise guide, yeah. to help me along. I cannot do this by myself, mm. and so that is what we want to be. At nothing is wasted. Is that's the whole idea behind this anvil logo that you see. Mm. We want to be the placeholder where God does the refining work in your life. He's the master blacksmith, and that's there's going right. to be some painful forging that takes place as you walk through healing, as you walk mm -hmm. through the circumstances in your life. And we're just the placeholder. We're just going to hold you right there while God is doing his refining work in your life. And, um, and this is a critical juncture, I think, for many of you guys going, okay, am I going to allow myself to be placed on that placeholder mm. and let God do what he wants to do yeah, to shape me right. into the image of Jesus? That's right. So Aubrey, would you pray for our community? Yeah, let's pray. Mm. Oh, God, it is, it is beyond us to even comprehend the fact that we have a God who does not leave us alone in our suffering and who pursues us in our pain. And we're so thankful, Lord, that you do not leave us alone, even when the valley is low, even when the night is dark, even when we cannot see the path in front of us, God, you are there guiding us. And so we thank you. Lord, for our listeners who are in that difficult, painful place and longing for a next step, longing for a hand to lift them out of the pit, longing for a little flashlight in the dark, God, I, I pray that as they've been searching and looking for a sign or looking for an answer, that they see the fact that they've listened to this very episode, that it's come across their path, that's the sign, that's the answer, that's your invitation. You are saying, I'm seeking you, I'm pursuing you in your tragedy, in your trial, in your trauma, and I want to lift you out through the ministry of Nothing Is Wasted. And so God, for our listeners, would you, first of all, be tender with them. Mm. God, be near. 
be intimate, continue to remind them that you're there, especially when they can't hear you or see you. But would you also use this as a spark? God, give them courage to take the next step in their healing journey. Go to the website, find out about coaching, or maybe God, you're even calling them to pour out of their ministry, to pour out of their pain, to comfort those in the ways that they've been comforted, as your scripture says. God, would you spark and ignite them to take that first step into learning what it means to be a coach? Because nothing is wasted. We mean that. That's right. And so God, we we do just... um. Oh, we thank you again that you give us yourself and you give us one another. Mm -hmm. And so God, thank you for this moment. May this be a marker moment in a listener's life mm -hmm. in such a way that they respond to you, that they see you and that you do some new breakthrough work. And so Lord, we thank you. Once again, we thank you for these incredible coaches. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your incredible spirit that's with, uh, with us. And we thank you for the listeners and how you're already moving in such a powerful way. We mm -hmm. love you, Jesus. It's because of your suffering that we can even know you. And so we thank you for both your suffering and your victory that gives us hope and gives us life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oof, man. Mm. What a wonderful episode. Just like every single week, we have great ones, but I feel like they get better and better and better every Amen. single week. And <laughs> so, man, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for listening, for tuning in. Uh, we want to thank Sleeping at Last for providing all the music for the Nothing Is Wasted podcast. You can download or stream his music anywhere music can be downloaded and streamed. We want to encourage you to subscribe to this on YouTube if that's where you like to consume content from Nothing Is Wasted. Or also, we, you know, um, we'd love for you to write a review on the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts. It really helps us as we're being encouraged along the way. We'd love to hear your story. Mm -hmm. Follow us on the socials, Instagram specifically, at Nothing Is Wasted Ministries. You can follow me at Davey Blackburn. You can follow Aubrey at Obsamp. And um, next week, we have an incredible conversation. And so why don't you go ahead and tune into a little clip uh, for next week's conversation. And so I just think, okay, God is doing some, like when he redeems the mm. brokenness, the, the, uh, the, the beauty that comes forth is just like takes your wow, breath away. Choice. And that's what we get to witness when we walk in hard places. Um, again, it doesn't have to be in, through an adoption story, but whatever hard places you're walking through, like expect miraculous things. And when God is doing your redemptive work um, and you know, it's, it's just gonna, yeah, you're just, I, I think just be, be Girl, open to that. That's so <laughs> powerful. Like, oh, I'm so glad you just said that. Thank you. Beautiful. That'll, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think for all of our listeners, uh, mm -hmm. walking through adop mm -hmm. adoption or just something to be expectant for those miracles right. in the hard places. Thank you for that choice. Yeah. That's such a good pastoral yeah. word. Hey friend, if you liked this episode, be sure to like, and subscribe so that you can stay in the loop every time Nothing Is Wasted releases a piece of content here on this YouTube channel.